started. Yes, sir. Tommy, we have a are you ready? Blood on the agenda. Yeah. Well, go ahead, Mr. Laura. You want to get us started? I do want to get you started, and we are on a bit of a time uh, crunch because at 6:30 we have to stop for a public hearing, uh, and then of course at 7 o'clock we do have to have a budget vote. So uh, we, there's no executive session planned, and there. Uh, there, the items we can move through quickly. This is really a financial night. Uh, it's really a lot about finances. And to kick that off, I just wanted to welcome back the best school business official and treasurer in Western New York and New York State, uh, <laughs> Becky and Julie. Well, <laughs> wow, standing ovation. Yeah. I'm the happiest man in the world that they're back, for obvious reasons. We plugged along, limped along, yeah. but um, thank God for Becky and Julie, and um, certainly uh, really happy for Julie and her beautiful baby, and Becky uh, uh, looking good and on the way back, so we're so happy that you're both back with us um, this evening. The first presentation, and I'm going to get right to it, uh, actually is something that Mr. Bilson asked for. Uh, and I think it's, it's uh, one of the things I want to point out is a couple of the board members have asked for certain things. We do, Mr. Petrosi, have a presentation coming up on the, uh, I know Rick gave one on the academic side. We have one on the social emotional side that you asked for. And I do have an invitation into our fire chief and our police chief that Mr. Villardo asked for coming up in May to come before you. But uh, this evening, Mr. Bilson gets the top billing on something that he's asked for, and I think it's really a long overdue, uh, and it deals with finances. And I'm going to ask uh, one of our new employees, because I've never seen him look this good. Mr. Schwartfinger, would you come to the mic? Wow, uh, look at him all snazzed yeah. up. He, uh, he um, gets his wardrobe um, guidance from Earl Smeal, so uh, Please pardon him, but uh, before Richard before Richard starts, uh, get haircut too. doesn't he look? Wow, you know? you're getting oohs and ahs, everything. Well, uh, well, I just, I'm going to end on a good note then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to I wanted to introduce him to you. He's been with us for how many years? He's been with us, Richard. Seven. Seven years. Seven. He's he's an he's one of our accountants, and appreciate the fact that Richard comes to all of our board meetings and has really learned, listened, and grown. And I will say. Uh, he deserves uh, a lot of credit and thanks. Uh, and of course, Becky and Julie, in their absence, have been in contact. But Richard stepped up and has done a lot of things. And he uh, really has gotten quite involved with capital projects. And capital projects accounting is where we're putting him. But Richard's one of Richard's major role is to be responsible for what we call the F code budget. How many times we've talked about, but that's being paid out of the F code. The A code is the 190 million that we're going to talk about in a minute. But we have an F code budget, and frequently I'll say, yeah, but that's in the F code budget. That's the grant budget. So the F code budget, and Richard is going to go very quickly through this, but if you ever wanted to keep this document and refer to it, I think he's done a really excellent job. I just want to set the stage, and I'm going to let him show his skills by moving quickly and smartly through this. But while you know, Russ is watching me already on replay. <laughs> Russ is watching me already. There's a tape delay for those of you at home. Um, the F code budget is the grant budget. And this year, $37.6 million. It's $37.6 million of our money is in the F code budget grants. In addition to that, 251 of our FTEs are paid for out of this budget. So you know a lot about the A code, but Richard has put together a nice presentation and we couldn't run the district without this F code budget. It's highly regulated, it's highly audited, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna let you take it away, Richard, move smartly and swiftly through this. So go ahead, take it away. Okay, as uh, Mr. Lurie said, the F code budget is about $37 million. Um, the bulk of that is our Title I grant, which is called the ESSA Consolidated Application. It's about $6 million. Um, for Title I, it's used for remediation purposes for our students. There's about 58 um, FTEs in there, so 58 staff members. 
that ranges from um, instructional coaches to AIS coaches, um, reading recovery, PEP TAs, um, counselors, and social workers. Um, our Title IIA budget um, is used to support effective instruction, and that's about $450,000. Um, our Title III budget, um, there's two uh, portions of Title III. ELL, which is um, instruction for English language learners, and our Title III immigrant funds. The Title III immigrant funds um, support services to improve the um, English language proficiency of our ELL students. I believe we um, contracted with NU to run the, the um, language program on Saturdays for that. Right. Um, and then our Title IV. Um, budget is 315,000. This, um, the purpose of this is student support and academic enrichment. For the, for the FTEs for this grant, we have tech integrators um, who work uh, throughout the district. Um, our new smart boards, you know, they're, they're the ones that are um, teaching teachers how to use the new smart boards to their um, uh, full potential. Uh, Title VI is our Indian Ed program. This is instruction for Native American students. There's two FTEs in here. Linda Kasten is the grant director for this. Um, she's really kind of taken off with this after um, Noreen Hill passed. Um, so let's stop right there. Those first three pages, those first six grants, I wouldn't call them grants. I'd call them entitlements. We're going to get that money. We get it every year. We have to fill out an application and we're entitled to it, the dollar amount is driven by our poverty and our population. So how do they get, they, there's a formula, that's how we get the allocations. So those first six on the first three slides he showed you, and you can see the F, when we give you an F code, it corresponds, those are entitlement grants. So we get them every year. It's really a misnomer to me as a director, I've kind of transitioned Title I over to Rick. Uh, he kind of leads it with a staff of people to apply. They give Rick a really hard time. Um, probably call him back six, seven, eight times for small changes. And sometimes we don't even get those approved until March right. because they're very particular. Mm -hmm. And when you hear the single audit, the single audit, is, this is part of the single audit. But we apply for these every year and Rick oversees the whole picture of the titles one through five. Uh, Indian Ed, it went through four. Indian Ed Richard really works on uh, the finances with Linda Captain. So it's a misnomer to say that I'm the director. I sign off on them, but Rick does the work on that and, and sees it. But those six grants, we're going to get them every year. And that Title I, as he said, 5.2 million, it's got that many staff members in there. It's because of our high poverty and, our high, and, our, and our, the number of students we have. Mm -hmm. So you, I think you can go ahead. Thank you, Richard. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our Title I School Improvement Grant. This is a grant that um, the district's awarded because we're in um, TSI status as a district. Right. And 79th Street um, High School and um, I believe Gaskill. Yep. We're all awarded um, monies to help with their DCIPs and their SIPs. Yep. Um, so this is the money I don't want. I don't want this money. Mm -hmm. But Rick takes it and writes the application for it because we have three schools who are in targeted status and Rick works with the principals to disseminate it. That's why we get this. This is not guaranteed. Rick, is this gonna continue this money? Well, at least one more year, and then we'll see the status of our schools, and they'll either leave the list or stay on. If they stay on, then the, then the grant funds keep coming. Okay. I hope we get rid of it. And I just tell them quickly, we get lots of little contributions, and that's yeah. what this is. And uh, through our friendship with Fidelis, we were awarded $2,000 to assist with food insecurity. Um, that was used to purchase food from Wegmans to supply our food pantries. Um, let me see, our Head Start grant is a, a $2.4 million. Um, between the two grants, there's 31 staff in there, and that's for instruction for three and four year olds for our Head Start, and early Head Starts are infants and toddler instruction. There is, but I don't believe we qualify. We don't qualify for it. 
Yeah, there's yeah. actually, er, yeah. Mr. Bassers, I think there's ten, nine, nine or ten titles. Yeah. Some of them we don't qualify for um, because of the population that we have or don't have. Correct. But there are, the, yeah, there are mm -hmm. titles. It's one through, I think one, one through, through ten. I believe it's one through ten. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This grant here is really Richard. I mean, he really is the financial guru of Head Start. And uh, yeah. uh, again, you you have 31 combined staff in there that mm -hmm. you know that Maria takes responsibility for hiring and working through, and Richard really handles the finances of Head Start. And let me tell you, there that is the most complicated one I think that we have, and the most yeah. rules. And it's a Agreed. federal grant. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, next is our special um, education grants. The IDEA grant is for um, our special education students. Uh, the IDEA Part B, Section 619 is for special education for pre-K. And between the two of them, it's about $2.3 um, $2 million. And there's 23 staff members uh, between the two grants. And these are entitlements as well. I, I would call these entitlements as yeah, a, it's a We're going to get these grants right. based on our special education. Based on special education counts. But yeah. please note that that is nowhere near the money that we spend on special ed students. So Correct. it's been about 2.1 million since yeah. I was doing grants. Yeah, the it's formula the, is very skewed. The formula came out in 1999, and there's the, the federal government projected to. Um, give about 40% of what it would actually cost to educate a special ed student. And this year, it's, that 40% is about 13%. Right. That's, so that's a very fun fact and a good one. I did not you. know that. <laughs> good work, good research. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Must be good leadership you're working under. Keep yeah. going. <laughs> 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 Yeah, about 2.4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't scratch the surface of what we need no. to pay for our special ed kids. Mm -hmm. But we're going to take the money. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the money. Absolutely. It hasn't, it hasn't risen in years. No. It fluctuates yearly, but it has not been significant. Yeah, about. About 18.4 million we spent on. Yeah. 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 Mm hmm it's close, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's all we get. How many, how many students do you get? I, I um, don't expect you to know, just to guess. I, I, that I don't know, but I can get back to you on that one. Well, I can tell you, 21% of our 7,000 students are qualified for special ed. Now, that goes from 813 classes to, um, to speech and language. So we, our, our population of 7,000 students 21% of them are, are special ed. 18 million. Smoke's coming out of his ears now. Yeah. How many students you said? 21% of seven. 14, 1,500. Yeah, it is. It's a very high number. It's a, and I guess the point is the money from the formulas really don't match up with the kids. However, the high cost students, if you look at the A code budget, remember we talked about the stacking of $39,000 or more kids, we do get reimbursement back on those students. But it's nowhere near what, what it costs to pay for a special needs student. So sometimes it's a very skewed number when they say, well, you're paying $26,000 a student. Well, we have, we, have, we have students, as you know, that cost us fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 for one kid in special education. It skews that number mm -hmm. up. Well, I got 12000 Yeah. But that's 12000 above the average size. Correct. So you're paying for an extra 12000 probably about 30000 a student. Yep, that's, yeah. that's about right. Am I right? Mm -hmm. It's close. So, I mean, close. Okay. For a special needs student, on the average, mm -hmm. some are more involved, no, no, no. some are less involved. Right. Some, and remember, we took a lot of our students back from outside programs because they don't have services. So that budget has really—that's a real driver inside your A code budget. Are these grants a matter of if you don't use it, you lose it? 
Yes, ma'am. One of our goals is to never return a dollar. Mm -hmm. We never want to return a dollar. That's kind of been our mantra. But we have to do it within the efficacy of what the grant is for because there are auditors, the auditors have an office here at the district. That's how frequently they're here. But we never want to give a dollar back. Some grants do allow carryover. That's a good point. Yeah. Some grants will allow you to carry the money over. Yeah. Mrs. Dunn, in the, the first six, the entitlements, they allow you to carry up to a certain percentage over if mm -hmm. you don't use it. So I think it's, it's Title I, you can carry how much over? 15%. 15%. Title II, I think you can carry 100%. 100%. And you yeah. can carry over for IDEA grants as well. And the, and the special ed grants yeah. you can carry over if you have anything left. Mm -hmm. Some grants, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Small known fact, this is how Becky and I met. Becky was the grants person and I came to the central office and I was doing grants, right? This is true. <laughs> That's how I met and then we've developed this wonderful friendship. Keep going, let's go. <laughs> we were riding a tandem bicycle. <laughs> I was in the front, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had it too. She was pedaling harder. I, she, I had the brakes, though. She was pedaling harder. He pedaling, he had that brake going, right? Go ahead, Richard. Um, our family and community engagement program um, is $125,000. The purpose of this grant is to improve life outcomes of young men of color. Um, this grant is mainly used for um, after-school activities um, and after-school enrichment activities. Right. Um, our stop grant is $329,734 this year. Um, this is the um, school violence prevention grant that we've received from the Department of Justice. The, the, the F, could you go back one, Ray? The FSIP one, I want to make sure. This is the official title of it, but you also may have heard this called My Brother's Keeper. Mm -hmm. You may. Do you have a My Brother's Keeper grant? The answer is right. yes. Mm -hmm. The official title is Family and Community Engagement. We receive $125,000 a year for it, in case you're asked that. Okay? Um, our Mentor Teacher Internship Program grant um, allocation this year is $51,240. Um, this is efforts to mentor new teachers. That's where our veteran teachers will take um, novice teachers and uh, you know, teach them how to teach. That's what we've been getting per yeah. year, 125,000. We've never gotten more, we've never received less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been steady. It's been like, it's been like crushes by, by years, right? So yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Like this, this uh, current F step. It'll end in 2027, and hopefully there'll be a new um, year, or there'll be a new grant to apply for. Yeah, that's for a, a good point. Of years. Some of these are multi-year. Mm -hmm. This one's multi-year. We have it through 27, mm -hmm. and stop. We have through 25. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, our 21st Century Community Learning Grant is $827,702. Um, this is mainly for after-school enrichment activities for the middle and the prep schools. Um, our uh, UPK grant is uh, about four hundred or $4,600,000 for this year. Um, that grant, the purpose of that is instruction for three and four-year-old students. Um, the statewide is uh, specifically for four-year-old students. And uh, we do have a lot of staff in these grants. This is very staff heavy staff and benefit heavy um, and that's a yearly grant and Kathy Sullivan is the director for that so we have 82 if you go back just a minute for, uh, we have 82 staff in there approximately mm -hmm. now that oftentimes just a nuance of these two grants the that's we pay in salary sometimes the general fund budget has to pick up the benefits because while the grant pays for teacher salaries. Uh, we've oftentimes, because of the salaries, and sometimes some of our higher paid price teachers are in the pre-K, we have to go to the general fund to pick up the benefits. So they do cross from time to time. So it's not purely paying for all of our pre-K teachers. Okay. 
Um, our teacher residency grant is new this year. Um, it's a $740,600 grant, and we're hoping to um, get up to 28 uh, teacher interns. Um, this, it's over a variety of uh, different subjects. Um, and our McKinney-Vento grant this year is 125000 uh, The purpose of this grant is to um, help facilitate improved attendance, engagement, and academic success of homeless children and youth. Right, we talk about our homeless population. This is where we go to to get supplies, materials, and mm -hmm. support for our over 250 homeless kids. Mm -hmm. Um, Smart Scholars Early College and Extended Day are um, both after school enrichment uh, grants. Smart Scholars is 112,500. Uh, and this provides academic supports for students with college partnerships. And our Extended Day grant supports projects to address school violence through after school programs. Um, our Teacher Resource Center is uh, run by Christine Barstas. This is um, to assist with the development and training of school district faculty. And our allocation this year was $66,938. Um, our William B. Hoyt grant was previously called the Focus on Families grant. Um, it provides supports to families in need. For this year, our allocation was $179,052. P Tech grants. Uh, the P Tech, the F nine four two four was the first P Tech grant we received. Um, I call P Tech two point uh, which was the second P Tech grant that we received. Um, P Tech for this year is three hundred and two dollars or three hundred and two thousand eight hundred eighteen dollars. The purpose of this grant is to prepare um, high school students for careers in technology and manufacturing. The PTEC 2.0 grant is $150,000 allocation this year. Um, and that the purpose of that grant is to prepare high school students for careers in computer science and technology. So two, two things to point out here, I think. One, the bulk of that money goes to pay for the college classes that we pay for, for the, you know, the kids take college classes. And that's the pot of money that we use to pay the community college for their classes. The second, Thing that I find interesting here is the FTE 0.25 and 0.39 how do you do that sometimes we have someone in this case we'll look at Dr. Chowdhury's name she oversees a couple of grants so we try to estimate the amount of time she works in each of the grant and parse that out by the percentage so a quarter of her week is on the one PTEC the new the newer one she's spending more time on so you combine those and you get 6.5. There's in some other grant, there's another 3.5 of her mm -hmm. to make up her salary. Correct. It's probably in Title I. I yes. If I remember, it's probably in Title I. Yes. So mm -hmm. that happens a lot. The interesting thing for auditing purposes is that we, when we get audited, we have to prove she does this much time here and does this grant, on and on and on. So it becomes, it's a help to hire these Teach, to hire teachers on special assignment to run them, but it also becomes a bit challenging when we've got to prove how much time they've used to service the grant. But that's why those awkward numbers are in the FTEs. Okay. okay. Um, the Our Schools Channel is a grant that we get from the City of Niagara Falls. They renew that yearly, and that's for the operation and maintenance of the uh, media channel at the high school, and that's 10000 a year. Right. Um, the Learning Technology Grant is uh, $98,000 for this year. Um, the purpose of that grant is to develop, implement, and share resources to facilitate the delivery of quality instruction through efficient use of technology. And that grant is ending. Correct. That and grant uh, we have exhausted year. that, Rick. Yes. So Rick worked a lot on this grant to create online courses that teachers could use with kids who were remote or credit mm -hmm. recovery. Um, these two uh, mental health grants are centered around increasing our mental health interns. In our school-based mental health grant, we have 13 interns. And in our uh, school health service preparation grant, we have 4.45 um, um, interns. 
The allocation for the school-based mental health is $721,679, and this mental health service preparation grant is $500,000. Something that Rick did really well here is he, know, he knew that the one grant was ending in 24, but we were able to apply for and get the second one that will take us to 27 and let us elongate the work we were doing in mental health from 19 to 27 and have money to support it. So it was really good work on his part to keep that money in a constant flow even though we're going to be down to one grant. Um, we also have a student mental health service grant. Uh, this grant increases mental health services to students uh, this year, the allocation is $969,072. Um, this is another grant that we have carryover for. Um, so we could use that going forward if needed. Um, the Empire State Grant is for after school enrichment for the elementary schools. Uh, the allocation this year is 464000 and this grant does end this year. Yeah, this I want to point this out. Uh, and Mr. Bass, we've talked about this a bit. This grant is ending, which uh, board members is a bit of a problem, uh, and there's no renewal of this grant. Correct. Mm -hmm. This was the grant that we used to do a lot of things with the Boys and Girls Club, um, from providing free latchkey mm -hmm. Correct. to mm -hmm. some other um, really good programs. I think you know where I'm going with this, Earl, uh, to some really good programs. That's ending. Uh, and, and that's, a big, that's a big number that's ending. Mm -hmm. And no further application was released to school districts. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is that an RFP was put out where organizations could apply for it. Mm -hmm. So the Boys and Girls Club have applied for two of the grants. For a total of five schools so we lose it but we are working i shouldn't say we i should say rick and tom and some other people are working with the boys and girls clubs to keep it going for five of our elementary schools but we won't hold it any longer the boys and girls club will hold it because it's it, it, it has been a really helpful grant for after school programs for our elementary kids and i just want you to be aware of that we're losing this our hope is, and we don't know if they'll get it or not, but our hope and our effort has been, let's give the Boys and Girls Club all the help they can get to get those two grants to mm -hmm. make up for at least five schools. Mm -hmm. But you should know that grant is ending. It is. Okay. Um, we received the ARP allocation for homeless children and youth uh, for $99,225. Um, the purpose of this grant is um, to purchase allowable um, items for homeless children and youth that are covered under ARP. Um, and our biggest grant, the $30 million grant, is ARP. The purpose of this is COVID-19 preparedness and recovery. Um, this is the big one that ends this year. So, Right. This is the one, and we'll talk about it momentarily, and Becky will do a presentation on it. This is the one we've stepped away from. This is all the COVID money, and we're stepping away from it, and this is what we spent, and Becky's going to show you in a minute how we spent it and what we still have to do. But that has gone away, and you know we've talked about this a million times. We've walked our people out of this grant back to the general fund uh, because it's going away. Mm -hmm. um, these two are, are not technically grants. We received the money for these from, the, from STAC, which Mr. Lori mentioned earlier. Um, St. Mary's School for the Deaf um, is an internal budget. It's not really an allocation. This year we budgeted 150,000. Um, for 12 month handicap, we budgeted $1,565,608. Um, and in summary, the uh, budget for the special aid fund for this year is $37,616,646. Within that budget, there's 251.25 staff members. We do have two grants that are uh, pending approval, the Focus on Families Grant and the Community Development Block Grant, which um, we wrote for tutoring services 
we're um, after school. Um, the grants that are ending, uh, American Rescue, um, American Rescue Plan, Homeless Children and Youth. We did receive a um, uh, allocation for ARP Head Start. That'll be ending um, as well. That allocation was $368,000. We used that to um, replace the boiler at the DeFrancesco Center. And we're going to use the rest of it to purchase technology, which we've been talking about this week. Um, Empire State is ending, uh, learning technology is ending, and the mental health providers pipeline is at also ending this year. So we all knew the ARP was going away. The homeless and the Head Start were for one shot. Mm -hmm. Well, the homeless was to support our homeless program. The Head Start ARP, as Richard said, was for a boiler. Learning technology, I think Rick got everything he could out of that grant. And then the mental health grant I think that we've bridged it with two others. I think if I were to tell you the biggest hit and hurt right now is this elementary empire grant of 464,000 that we don't have continuing. Mm -hmm. And our fallback on that is to hope that the Boys and Girls Club gets it. Uh, that's going to be the biggest hit and hurt. I think we're gonna get focus on families and I think we're gonna get the community development one. Mm -hmm. Rick and team, are constantly looking for what's on the horizon. And we've become a very discerning team to say, do we have a chance at this? Does it fit our program? Should we go for it? Or is it not something we should? Uh, so there, they do, grants do come out from time to time. Rick was telling me yesterday that he and team are looking at a, uh, a count, school counseling grant that they're going to evaluate. Uh, we need to keep this grant figure at that level to keep our programming. And as I said, we've walked away from ARP and you know all about that, but the Empire one would probably be the one that is most impactful for you. And I just think Richard did a really good job. If you ever wondered what the F code meant, you pull this document out, you look at the grant and what it supports and what we're trying to do with it. Mm -hmm. All of these grants are highly audited. We've had visited. We've had visited on. We've had visited on many of these already. Uh, we've not had findings or things that we've had to turn back or do over or give back money. Um, so that's Richard's job to watch that every dollar is spent in the right place, and that we continue to look for grant sources. So I know Rob, you asked about this. You now know the A code budget. This is what consists of the F code budget. There is a C budget which is the cafeteria budget. I want to say 8 million, 11 million. About eight, I, it's between there. So there's a C budget. And then there is, I want to say there's an H budget. Is it H? Yeah. Mm -hmm. H budget is capital projects. So in budgeting in schools, you've got the A, which is your big one, the F, the C is cafeteria, and the H is where our capital projects is. All those letters line up with every school district in the state, and that's how we report them in. Mm -hmm. But this $37 million is, uh, look what it employs, 251 people, even though some are parts of people. Mm -hmm. But it allows us to hire 251 of our 1,450 staff. So mm -hmm. pretty good job, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Exemplary leadership. Thank you, Richard, for. <laughs> Rob, is this kind of what you were looking for, um, kind of an explanation of what we have? It is. I think, you know, if we continue doing this yeah. uh, during the budgeting season, it's always helpful. And okay. Kudos to those that are working hard to secure these, these grants, because not only is it creating jobs, it's also creating opportunity for the students, right? Exactly. So it's great. Exactly. Great job. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Yep. Yeah. You're welcome. Hi, Mike. We, um, I'm going to allow uh, if, if Becky and Julie uh, can give me a break. Ray, could you pull up the general fund budget? So this is what we've been working on. You all have seen this many, many, many times. There is, um, I'll start, I'll start and then uh, Becky and Julie, will you chime in? Um, there is no state budget. There is no state budget yet. Um, there's a lot of talk about it. There's a lot of conjecture about it. 
There's even some hope that our foundation aid will increase. But there's nothing official there. Nothing has changed since we last met on May 22nd. We have scrubbed the expenses. We have looked at the revenues. Nothing has changed. So later this evening, we're going to recommend to you a $190, $992 budget. Um, I, I will say it before you vote on it this evening. It is, a, uh, it is our best thinking. It's disappointing in a couple of ways that there's no state budget. Uh, we cannot spend a dollar over 190000 if we were to get more money in foundation aid, what it would do is it would offset the use of your reserves. Uh, I'm hoping we do. I'm hoping we get another $600,000. If I try to figure out the foundation aid formula, that would help. The other thing that would offset the use of your reserves is any carryover money that we have this year. It's far too early to make an estimate of what that carryover money is. However, I do want to give you one piece of hopeful information on the carryover amount. Uh, Julie and Becky showed me yesterday that our expected revenues are coming in much higher than we anticipated this year. So that's a result of a couple of good things, more property tax collection, um, more, uh, more, in the, um, more in the interest revenue, and there was one other big one, utility tax coming in better. And just as a small thing, small thing, about $230,000 in non-mandated pilots have come into us. So when you add those up right there, it comes up with about a million dollars of unanticipated or unbudgeted for revenue that we haven't spent. So I like to think that that's the first million into the carryover pot. Now, what will make, what will make up the rest of the carryover pot? What we don't spend by June 30th. I would tell you this in a conservative way, there will be some money there, but I don't believe it will be to the tune of what you've heard us from before. So, there are two hopes in this budget. One, that the governor sees the light on the foundation aid formula and increases that amount to minimize our use of reserves. And two, uh, you will have some carryover this year. Uh, I'll give you a base of a million. It could go anywhere from one to four million um, to mitigate that $7.2 million amount of uh, reserves. I'm proud of the budget because, I'm really proud of the board, because uh, you've, unfortunately, I'm sure you've watched TV and seen some budgets and filled rooms with, with the number of cuts. I, I don't want to get into specific districts, but... Uh, every day there's something. Every day there's a different one, and um, there are two districts. I, I won't name them, but we were with the superintendents today. One is laying off 19 and one is laying off about 33. Mm -hmm. uh, we're taking a couple by attrition here. No programs are being cut. And um, I appreciate your trust and your understanding that it is raining really, really, really hard. And uh, it's, I recognize this is an unsustainable way to do this, but I'm hoping that by November, we can tell you that the 7.2 is really only 3.2. That would be my best hope. Becky, Julie, how'd I do? How are we doing? And we'll add something that I missed. Missed. Um, a lot depends on what the, gov you know, the legislative budget that comes out. And honestly, I think the spending is a really good estimate of what we really will be spending next year. There's still some unknowns. Uh, the CPI for transportation contracts, that's an estimate. Hopefully it comes in a little bit lower, things like that. Um, but otherwise, 
I think we're also spreading out the use of reserves in a very reasonable fashion. So we're not cutting any reserve out, so it's there for future use. And the use of fund balance, if we can replenish it with this year's, you know, at the end of this year, with the, once we get through the audit, if we can replenish what we've used, plus maybe put a little bit back into some reserves, uh, we're in a better spot for the upcoming budget years where I think we're gonna be looking at this type of a scenario for a little while. Thanks, Becky. And what I have promised the president and the board members is uh, working with everyone, Maria in particular, that any time we have a vacancy uh, through, through attrition, uh, retirement, et cetera, we will scrub the position to make sure that we absolutely need it because the the best way to do things like this, when we, we, there's no good way to do it, but the best way to do it is when the position's vacated. So I give you my word, we'll scrub that position for need, for you know that whether 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 it has to be absolutely filled or not, uh, and we will be as creative as possible. Uh, this also leads into the property tax report card, which um, we'll ask you to vote on this evening at seven o'clock. If uh, the property tax report card does feature 190, 992, 049, and the use of the reserves, and if that is approved by you tonight, uh, Becky and Julie will be in my office tomorrow to submit that to the state, uh, and then we will have that on time. So, um, really, um, I, I, I thank you. I thank you for your understanding of programs and people and the way we've handled this, I think, with good dignity. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Or Julie or Becky can, because I'm just out of, I'm tired. No, I'm, not, I'm not tired at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so we have to review the agenda, Array. At, at, uh, at 6.30, Becky is going to come up, and she is going to give you a recap of the American Rescue Fund spending uh, so that you'll have a recap, and if anybody has a question or comment, they can do that. At 7 o'clock, we're going to ask you to vote on two items, and I think Judy has it laid out this way. At 7 o'clock, we'll do our usual opening of play, prayer and pledge, and then there are two resolutions. There's the public hearing, first of all. But if you'd go to the seven o'clock one, Ray. At seven o'clock, you're just going to be asked for two resolutions. Okay, it's okay. You have it, Russ? It is the usual pledge, the prayer, the roll call, and then there are two resolutions. And um, um, I just would ask if I could just again, for the record, make a statement to the public about the budget and the property tax report card before you vote, or once you get it on the table. I'd like to do that officially for, for everyone's listening. I know, I know school district budgets at this time are very, um, Prominent, right? You see it all over the news, and I think uh, I think um, you know I want to I want to at least make sure that uh, I make put our comments in the record and your comments too, if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, Judy, the public hearing. Do we have a pledge to the flag or no? We do not, sir. We moved it over to the regular, the special. I meeting. appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. Um, I know there's a few minutes before that hearing to start. We could take a look at the August, April 25th meeting. Uh, if we can get that in right now, and again, if there's questions, I don't mean to rush you, but if we can get that in, we'll, we'll do that now. And um, thanks. So this is for the 25th. This is your next meeting, uh, it's the 25th, the usuals. I just wanted to point something out. At uh, 3.03, we're going to have two very short presentations here. The Two groups would like to come and thank you. Two, two, two groups would like to come and thank you. 
The students who had, uh, went on the Ghana trip would like to come before the board to say thank you. And the group that went to Disney uh, had put together a two minute and 43 second video thanking each of the board members for their support of that. Then we'll go through the regular agenda. There are no bids. There are four short term contracts. Rick, Rick Rogers Lumber Company, let, let me tell you what that is. We're not building things. This is a training module that Chief Del Porto got for de-escalation for, we put this in there for high school teachers. You know, you, we heard a couple of meetings ago, teachers need better training in terms of their positioning around fights. This is someone who specializes in this. We're gonna offer three opportunities for the teachers to go to that training. That's what that $900 is being spent for. And that's why it's an A code. Elizabeth Bell, those two are both through the Teacher Resource Center. And number four is something that we missed for the week of the young child. This is for two classes to go to the aquarium. That had already happened and, and we missed it um, at last meeting. I can move quickly through the other items if, if it's okay. Sure. Go ahead, Ray. Uh, thank you, Judy, for putting this. This may not be on your agenda, but the teacher's desk gave a huge amount of supplies to Niagara Falls High School, and I wanted to send them a thank you note. 602, if you go to your Richard packet, this is to accept the funds for the immigrant grant. Uh, that's a $23,058 grant. Six, uh, 604, 605 and 606 are the filing for the safety plan. I'm sorry, 603, 604 and 605 and 606 are for the code of conduct and, and safety plans. This is only to say we're gonna file them. In May, we'll come back to you with any changes to the codes of conduct. But we've gotta file them, put them out there, wait 30 days, and then officially adopt them and send them in. Right. Right. I think, I think that's very well said, and, I, and if, if I have it correctly, we're going to change these resolutions to say that the public hearing on the Code of Conduct will be May 8th. At that point, we'll have a, a, a grid for you to show you what changes occurred, so you'll know, and then we'll let them sit, and then on the, tw the 20th, 30 days. 30 days. Right. So 30 days to sit for public comment will be you'll officially adopt them on the 20th, and I believe we have to have them filed by the 30th. So we're within the timeline, if that makes sense. Thank you, Angelo. 607 um, is, um, oh, let me look here. Uh, Ju Judy, you are 607. Uh, would you explain that, please? That is your uh, annual contract with the Board of Elections to have them provide the voting machines as well as the other uh, work that they provide for us. The only difference being that this year they are asking uh, to pass a five-year contract instead of a one-year contract, and Mr. Massaro is working with Mr. George on a few points of concern that he has. So this is for the use of those machines. Okay. 608, uh, we provide health service for non-resident students and we collect money from those districts. Is that correct, uh, Julie, Becky? Yes. 
So that this is, allows us to collect money for any non-resident student that we provide those services from, and we build a district. Now, 609, these are all payments for capital projects, okay? And my numbering is different than yours, but I'll, I'll read through them. Uh, Scrifari, $361,000, that, that's work they've done. They've fin they will have finished uh, three windows, three school windows. 608 is for Danforth, and remember we have two Danforth contracts, and I know Earl's had the chance to walk Gaskill and LaSalle and is pretty pleased with the progress on the air conditioning at Gaskill and LaSalle. We're nowhere near turning it on, but all of the work looks like it's in really good shape. What's going to slow us down, and it's not the contractor's fault, what's going to slow us down on that air conditioning is the electrical motherboard that has a 50-week lead time. Oh. So we're going to get to a point with that air conditioning in those schools and then come to a halt because we're waiting for some electrical parts. But the good news is, according to Earl, and I trust him, the, they're moving well, so that's payment to those two companies. Can you can. Uh, Earl, this is directed at you. The the um, the motherboards. Do we have any kind of warranty on those motherboards for any significant time? Because the reason why I ask that question is, we're having at the city we have problems with our courthouse. We possibly lost one today, one of the boards, one of the uh, units. Hmm. High volt. He's mumbling. I don't know what that means. That means I do high voltage. Earl? So, um, Mr. Pareto, when you say motherboard, and Mr. Lori uses the term motherboard, I believe there may be, pun intended, a disconnect. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you, Earl. One of you guys got it. <laughs> um, okay. When, when Mark says motherboard, what he's referring to is the main switch gear for the building. Oh. It's about a 50 to 55 week turner you know um delivery ex expectation from sometime in early february now when you say motherboard i assume you're talking about the controllers for the actual hvac systems All right they're covered by the manufacturer's warranty for at least one year from the date of installation or what we use is the date of turnover right yeah okay just wondering because that stuff's getting like the stuff from train it's getting kind of it's pricey. Oh, well, I've gotten my lesson in electricity tonight. I won't talk <laughs> about number seven wire and number six wire. We are paying Fry. They have been working. We are also paying Stark. Uh, er, er, Ray has worked closely with Stark. We had a really good meeting yesterday that Ray led. I just want to tell you about the meeting that Ray led with Stark yesterday, which I thought was very good, Ray. You know, in this project, Every one of our doors will have a nuisance alarm on it. And a race coordination meeting yesterday was to make sure all the wiring was going in so that not only would the nuisance alarm sound, but a camera would be pointed to that door. And uh, we are right on schedule for that with Stark. So Ray led a good meeting on that. We are also paying um, um, for Johnson Controls, who's working with us. When you go down the line, there are payments for our ARP project to CIR, DV Brown, and Johnson Controls again. But remember, the first payments are for ABOFA, that's the capital project. The second payments are for ARP, that is Bond and Niagara Falls High School's uh, upgrades. And Earl also said something, I'm gonna really put him on the spot, he said that to me. He has walked Niagara Falls High School with the new chiller plant. Of as recently as about 1 p.m. today. And would you talk about what you're seeing? Okay, I'm very happy to report that the chiller plant at Niagara Falls High School is coming along nicely. Um, there's a factory rep uh, in town for the next three days to perform the startup of all the chillers. There are eight of them in the bank. 
Uh, the cooling tower is all hooked up. All the controls are being hooked up. The pumps on the secondary loop as well as the cooling tower loop have been running for over a day. Tomorrow morning they'll be shut down. The strainers will be cleaned out and we will test fire the entire chiller bank to chill the water for the building starting Saturday morning. Okay, so um, I'm very pleased to report uh, it's looking really good right now. Really good. Yeah. Um, actually, we'll, the chiller plant will be ready to go sooner than since my tenure as director of facilities than it's ever been. We normally don't start it this early for fear of freezing at the cooling tower. But we want to start it early, being that it's a brand new plant, to make sure we shake it down so that when May rolls around, we start getting those warm days, we're fully ready to cool. Yeah, you're, I'll say it this way. It's a month ahead of schedule. It's a month ahead of schedule. I'm Very sorry. verbose. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Very okay. verbose. Oh, sorry. Wow. That's okay. I, I think Earl's been hanging around with you too long and picking yeah. up a little uh, yeah, extra Earl's trick. Yeah, Earl's learning big words. <laughs> wow. Listen, here's the way I thought. Here's the way well, I heard. It was just a yes or a no answer, Nick, but that's okay. I, I heard your question. Your comments, though. Here's how I heard your question. We usually start it around Mother's Day. We're starting it next this weekend. So I think it's a month early. It's a month ahead of schedule. All right? And what a mother. Back, sir. Earl, a quick question. If we do get a cold snap, if we, do, if we do get a cold snap, what do we do? Just run it? Okay, so I did discuss that with the pipe fitters that are putting it together. And what we will do is we have um, sump heaters for the cooling tower, for the water that remains in the tower. But we will drain down the piping to below the roof line if it looks like we're going to get a cold enough snap. Just out of an abundance of caution. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> he is he's is really feeling himself isn't he he is just feeling good about himself he, he is if you would uh if you'd go down a little bit more um we we have been working on a policy that actually maria has headed up on workplace violence we meet with our unions regularly and uh we, you've already approved this once but working together we have made some changes to the workplace violence a program that Maria will present to you. I, I need to I need to just caution you that I may, we may, Becky and I and Julie may need to add one resolution that's not on here. On April 25th, Bonadeo is presenting to the audit committee. And if we have any findings, we have to write a cap, a comprehensive improvement plan. Becky and I have not seen the audit yet. So we, I'm praying and hoping there aren't any findings, but if there are, we have to add a resolution to have you approve the cap. Now we'll talk about it in our review, I will talk about it in the audit committee, but we don't know if there'll be a cap and we have to do that because that has to be submitted to the state by April 30th. So dependent on the Bonadeo report that I hope to get next week to review, I'll update you, but I may have to add a resolution that Judy is aware of to add a comprehensive improvement plan for uh, Bonadeo. I, th that's our agenda for the 25th. Now, we, the only thing that we didn't go over is personnel, but would you like us to sneak personnel in now or do the hearing? Maria, can you do personnel? That way we'll have done the whole review of the meeting. I, did, I don't mean to rush you, but um, this way we're almost on time. Thank you, Maria. And let me say one more thing while Maria is distributing uh, for the board. I just mentioned we may have to add the cap. Today, um, I asked Maria to potentially add one more item to the personnel report that you don't have, but I'd like to get this approved. I'd like you to consider approving it. What Maria is 90% done with, is the 2024-2025 school calendar. We have, uh, and I'm the holdup on it, I have to give her one more answer, but um, if we can get this done, we think we have it approved with NFT, Maria has to work with the other units and I have to give her an answer, the, that may be an addition for your 25th meeting. And if that's the case, before the meeting starts and you vote on it, I'll have Maria go through the calendar with you. But I know there are a lot of people asking, where's the calendar for next year? It's 90% done, 
and my goal, if, if I can get her the answers she needs tomorrow, which I will, uh, she'll complete it tomorrow, hopefully, or, or Monday. Thank you. Okay, beginning with the certificated report, you'll see the resignation of a teaching assistant at Bluniva Bond. You'll see the appointment of a probationary speech teacher at Bluniva Bond and G.J. Mann. Turning to page 2 of 15, you're seeing two 60-day conversions that are coming up, one on May 3rd for an elementary teacher and one on April 26th for a social studies teacher. Then we're just going to move down on page 2 and for the rest of the report to the per diem and schedules B, C, D, E, F, and G. Um, if you have any questions about any of those items, please let me know. There may be some additions to next personnel report, but the main one, if we do have an addition to the next personnel report, will be the attachment of the 2024-2025 calendar, as Mr. Lori mentioned. The only thing I'd point out, Maria, in your report is you're starting to put summer people in here. We are. So we're trying to get ahead by putting summer appointments in this, resol in this report for the 25th. And, and I, I, I promise you, in the May report, I'd like to get staffing put on there for September and May. So these are start, yeah, that early. These are gonna to start to get thick. Are Coming, they're, we've they're, posted for them, the selections are being made, and those will be on. Some are yeah. here, but they're not all done. Yeah. Summer sports camp, Rick. I believe it's on Yeah, it's here. You're not going to see them under the regular names as you would. You're going to see them. You'll see like Camp Wolverine, um, Camp Wolverine Senior, Summer Extended Learning Program begins on page 3 of 15. Um, I'm trying to see if we, if we did get the camp on. We should have, but I'm not sure if we did. So the camp may be on the next one, but it's coming. We, we've already had the postings, and we've already, yeah. Yep, see? Okay. Moving on to the classified report. See a resignation of a pre-K classroom associate, a program aide at Head Start, and a systems engineer in the Information Services Department. You'll see the probationary appointment of a safety officer at Niagara Falls High School, temporary appointment of some associates at Bluniva Bond Elementary, and then change of status for a safety officer going from temporary to permanent and leaves of absence in addition to some summer work. And you'll see here the summer work that we've listed, again, Camp Wolverine, Camp Wolverine Senior, the ELP program elementary, and the elementary special ed extended school year program. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Thanks, Maria. I will see you tomorrow about the calendar. I'd like to get that done. We do have to have a, a, a brief um, public hearing on the American Rescue Funds, Becky. I think Mr. Petrosi has to call it to order first. Find it, thank you. All right, public hearing, we'll call to order at 645 and on the American Rescue and Recovery Act. Judy, call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Present. Mr. Bilson? Here. Mr. Kinsami is excused. Mr. Capizzi? Here. Mrs. Dunn? Here. Mr. Cadella? I'll come back to Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Velardo? Here. And Mr. Petrosi? Here. Do we have Mr. Cadella? Mr. Mr. Cadella's on, uh, Ray? Okay, thank you. Eight present. Show him present, and we can always <coughs> verify that. Okay, saying that, um, you're up, young lady. I, Becky, if I could just make a comment. Um, like I like to do. First of all, we're super appreciative of the American Rescue Funds mm -hmm. Act, super appreciative of it. Um, I feel that we, and I think you'll see this with what we spend it on, and I think you'll see it, well, you hopefully saw it with our graduation rate, and you'll see it with our improving uh, elementary scores, that we can show you indicators where we are seeing growth, and I think you'll see it and hear it when we do a presentation with our social workers and psychologists, et cetera. So I feel that the school district used the money with great uh, efficacy and 
to the benefit of kids. I also tell you that we use the money under the direction of Becky and Earl to improve many of our systems, our, our air systems, I'll say. And we spent a great deal of money on that to make the air better in our schools. So we did a, we did a good, a, I think we did a good job, but Becky will show you. I'm disappointed again in New York State, though, I have to say this. I'm disappointed in New York State, and I'm disappointed for two reasons. One, I thought that putting a deadline to spend the money by September 30th really missed the fact that um, this money would help kids in a longer, the, the COVID implications have not gone away on September 30th. And I really wish, despite our lobbying that wasn't heard, there wasn't such a hard deadline. So I think that that's a little disappointing. But secondly, I'm disappointed in New York State because the federal government gave New York State the opportunity for a six-month extension. And New York State denied taking a six-month extension on these monies. And I just feel that, again, it's very short-sighted. Very short-sighted. Very short-sighted. COVID recovery uh, is not, it's going to take years. We're not going to use that as an excuse. But if you really want to use money correctly with efficacy and sustainability, and we did this because we walked the COVID staff into our budget, having at least six more months, if not longer, would have been, uh, would have been helpful. And to flat out turn down the federal government's request, I think is really a very poor decision. Having said that, we're going to do the, we did the best we had, could with what we had, and I'm very appreciative of the money. So, Becky, will you take us through how we spent our money? Okay, is that better? Okay. Hey, um, to give you a brief overview, uh, the funding was actually for the period of March 13th of 2020, date schools closed and in, it has to be spent through September 30th of 2024. The applications were not released until 2021 and due in August of 2021. But you could have applied for to pay for retroactively some items that you expended. We chose not to do that. Uh, our spending began in 21 and 22 fiscal year. And our total allocation was $30,138,817. There was a stipulation that we had to spend a minimum of 20% on that to address learning loss due to the pandemic. That 20% equates to $6,027,763. Our original plan was presented to the public and seeking public comment and approval on June 24th of 2021. Now we were also, as part of our spending plan, we had to factor in a plan for allowing continuation of some of the key services and positions that we were implementing. And you have already done that. So that was part of our original plan to, you know, find, figure out a way to bring, keep staffing intact that we, that was new staff through the uh, ARP funding. They've already come back to the general fund and we continue to employ them. So that's already been done. And this presentation is going to demonstrate how we've utilized the funds to date and what's left to um, spend be between now and September of 24. So on the left hand side, you're going to see the spending requirements. And on the right, you're going to see where we actually are. Uh, the total allocation of the $30,138,817 has to be spent again by September 30th. As of April 2nd, we have spent $24,996,060. That leaves uh, $5,142,757 that we will spend between now and the deadline of September 30th. The 20% set aside for learning loss was $6 million, and we have 
to date or over the summer we will have spent more than 10 million to address learning loss. That number might go up a little bit, depends on how the actual summer salaries play out. Then there were other stipulations. We had to spend 12.5% in the first year, which was you know, just under 4 million. In the first year, we spent 5.7 million, or 19%. In the second year of funding, we had to spend a minimum of 18.75%. We spent 33.7%, just over $10 million. In 23-24, the current year, we had to spend another 18.75%. We have spent uh, 41%, $12 million. The balance was at the district's discretion, and that balance from what we have spent to date will spend one point, just shy of $1.8 million before June 30th, and we'll spend the balance before September 30th. So strategies, uh, now this is the same format that this has been presented to you over the past few years, uh, starting with the first presentation in 2021. So the, again, any interventions that we funded had to be evidence-based and had to meet, um, address these categories. Strategies, programs to address needs of high-risk students, um, academic learning loss, we had to extend learning opportunities, remedial and enrichment beyond the regular school day and beyond the regular school year, and strategies that met so students' social and emotional learning needs. We have done all of those. Uh, the next is elementary enrichment interventions. We start with literacy, which is one of our greatest needs. We've trained interventionists and classroom teachers, which provide tiers two and three intervention services. We have purchased a lot of supplemental material that um, supports those interventions and regular classroom instruction for differentiated reading. And we have also supported STEM in the elementary level through these funds. The next slide shows continuation of what we've done on the elementary level. Uh, elementary mathematics, we've implemented math AIS program. And with that, within that program, the district has selected 17 teachers and teaching assistants who provide enrichment in tier two interventions to kindergarten through grade six students. Uh, the district also created four math instructional coaching positions, and we purchased a plethora of supplies and materials, again, that su support the direct instruction included in these programs. Uh, the enrichment and academic intervention programs, we allowed for professional development for teachers, anyone that touches the classroom. So teaching assistants, classroom support staff, all had uh, professional development available to them. Then we move on to what we've done with the prep in high school programs. Uh, the one big item is the cross-disciplinary pedagogy coaching services. This was done at the prep level, an uh, instructional coach at each of the two buildings and summer credit recovery courses. Uh, there's been discussion already about them continuing into this summer. Uh, we've done, they, we do the in-house summer school through this funding, and it will continue through September, so this year is still covered by these funds. At high school, we have also started the post-secondary success team, the PS2 team. They, are, um, they monitor student progress, they support credit accruals, uh, and they support um, students, they provide internship and work-based learning you know, opportunities. That team is made up of three coordinators, two counselors, two pupil service assistants, and a teaching assistant. We also created a credit recovery or late flex 
program. This is for students who lack the nece necessary credits for graduation. These pro this program had reaches students both during the day and after school hours. Uh, that's part of the late flex program and included in that team are a program coordinator, counselors, social workers, interventionists, and multiple district teachers. So now if you move on, we also have addressed the school climate and social emotional learning. Within that, we have hired five social workers who have proved to be invaluable to all of our students. Uh, we've also entered into agreements with uh, reputable, pro reputable providers who have offered staff development, in, which is aimed at uh, providing welcoming environment and for all pupils and families. To name a few, uh, the National Federation of Just Communities uh, was one of those. And we also have in, replaced musical instruments for students at all levels, sporting equipment, cafeteria furniture, student furnishings, uh, supplies and needed to support the programming that focuses on diverse needs and the diverse interests of all of our students. Uh, we've also developed relationships with various contractors who have delivered a many expanded programs within the district. Uh, Boys and Girls Club, for example, Hogel uh, is another good example of that. Then if you move on, we've invested in capital projects and air quality. Uh, we were improved by the Office of Facilities Planning at SED and by the ESSA funded programs uh, that run the ARP grant funding. Uh, we were approved for the project at a total of $7,179,527. Like was mentioned, we are replacing the chillers and air handlers at Niagara Falls High School, boiler plants at Blaniva Bond, and at Calfus Primary Schools. Then if you look for other major expenditures that um, relate to safety, equity, SEL, uh, playgrounds were installed at all schools. The next slide, yep. Playgrounds were installed at Blaniva Bond and Hyde Park Elementary Schools. The running track uh, was restriped. Tennis courts were resurfaced at the high school. New two-way radios were purchased for all safety, special duty, and administrative staff for better communications. Um, new water bottle filling stations were installed at all school buildings. The district invested in COVID-19 rated air filters and cleaning supplies. Summer sports programs were expanded to include all students at all levels and within all groups including secondary, elementary, ELL students, special needs students are all included in that. And we also funded supplemental busing to assure all eligible students were serviced during the nationwide bus driver shortage. The next shows our spending is categorized by the FS10, which is the application for the um, grant program. Professional salaries, code 15 is just over 13 million. Uh, support salaries are under 200,000. It's mostly associates in our summer programs. Uh, purchase, purchase services is over 11 million, but that includes our capital project. That, that's classified as a purchase service here. Uh, supplies and materials, over 3 million. Employee benefits, just at 1.5 and then equipment is just under 100,000. Uh, the categories might shift a little. We're putting in our final amendment. So items that I have classified as supplies, they might ask me to reclassify as equipment, vice versa. So I'll work with the grant director at State Ed when she gets the amendment. And so that could be tweaked a little bit. So overall, if you go to the next slide, uh, we've done a lot of great things, and I think we've done well reaching all students in the district and addressing such a diverse area of need. Um, for professional staffing positions, the district created 
you know, math AIS teachers, liter literacy intervention teachers, enrichment teachers, classroom teachers, teaching assistants, instructional coaches in uh, prep math literacy and STEM and social work positions. And additional programming, we've done the PS2 program, extended school year, elementary, secondary, and special needs, expended school day offerings at all grade levels and at all schools. So it includes credit recovery, uh, academic support, social emotional support, English language learning support, and we've um, purchased programmatic student services, including mentoring, skill building, student enrichment programs. And these were all designed to welcome students back to the in-person learning environment and help to improve attendance, which has been you know, really bad since the pandemic ended. And, and it's not just here, it's everywhere. Uh, and we've also invested in a lot of professional development to help our staff utilize all of these amazing resources and reach the students that they're intended to benefit. Uh, and lastly, academic and operational upgrades include the playgrounds at the um, two final elementary schools to get playgrounds, the upgrades to athletic fields, athletic equipment, musical instruments, the furniture, um, safety improvements like the radios, air filtration, cleaning supplies, and air quality improvements like the capital project at high school, Calpis, and Blaniva Bond. Um, we still plan to buy some additional like phys ed equipment to um, help with the expansion of elementary phys ed this past year stuff. So those are all little things that are already included in the budget that we still have yet to purchase. And some big items to reflect on is that the all salaried positions that were in ARP are now in the general fund budget as of this current year and they are included in the proposed budget that you're going to vote on. All hourly regular duty staff are also included in the current general fund proposed budget. Extended school year expenditures remain in this grant through September, well, for the July and August period, and that will be the last year that we can fund it through here. And programming provided by outside vendors, um, we, that has to be evaluated. So it's going to be continued either at a reduced rate or those services, all that will be determined by available funding sources as those programs, you know, the need is determined and the funding sources are determined. Are there any questions? You did a lot. You did a lot. Mm -hmm. We took the money, and I believe we used it for good purposes. We did a lot with staff. We did a lot for students. We did a lot of improvements to our school. That was all in three years. So the point is, if someone asks you, what did you do with your ARP funds, this is the document that shows and proves that we put that money to good use. We appreciate it. We put it to good use, and uh, we have an obligation to let everybody know what we did with it. I think it's a well done PowerPoint. If anyone has questions, if they're watching it, that you can type in public comments at NF Schools. I receive those. I'll be sure if I get a comment to report them back to the board, but the public has a right to comment on how we mm -hmm. used our money, and we will take a look at your comment. But I think you did a great job showing every, I, some of the stuff I forgot cafeteria furniture, musical instruments. I forgot that stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, we did a lot of things, a lot of good things for kids that will last beyond COVID, not to mention the instruction, which I'm going to talk about more in my summary at the conclusion of the voting. So thank you, Becky. Okay. Thank you. Nice job, Becky. Glad to have you back. Okay. May I have a motion? For, is there a public comment? Anyone, for, anyone want to speak on the on the ARP, American Rescue Plan? Nobody here. Thank you. Motion for adjournment, please. Thank you, Nick. Pardon me. 
Don't scare me like that. <laughs> Second by Earl. All in favor? Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Uh, now for a special board meeting for our budget approval. Will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we will have a prayer by Mrs. Dunn. Okay, let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for allowing us to meet today to discuss many decisions to be approved. We humbly seek your blessings on the financial decisions we make today. May our budget choices reflect a deep commitment to providing the best resources and opportunities for our students and educators. Let there be no slack to help us maintain a balanced financial plan that upholds our educational mission. We ask for continued guidance in managing our financial resources that invest in our students' future. With that, Lord, we trust and believe all is well. And with our faith, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Clara. I look at the agenda. Nice job. Judy, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Bass. Present. Mr. Bilson. Mr. Kinsemi is excused. Mr. Capizzi. Here. Mrs. Dunn. Here. Mr. Cadella is remote. Mr. Pareto. Here. Mr. Valardo. Mr. Petrosi. Yes. Eight present. Thank you. Uh, anyone from the public? We do not have anyone signed up, so we'll okay. move, move on. Uh, 2.01, approval of the superintendent's recommended budget. Do I have a motion? Thank you, Mr. Second. Belson, second by Mr. Pareto. Any questions? May I comment, Mr. President? Yes, you may. The budget that we're putting before the voters, and remember voters that are watching, you're voting on the $190 million budget. Let me get it exactly. $190,992,000. $49 budget has been worked on since January. Uh, I'm, I'm disappointed that we don't have a state budget, even though this board is being forced to act tonight on a budget without all of the information. Nonetheless, our team has given it the best, best thoughtful work possible to provide everything that we can for our kids. And as Ms. Dunn stated so eloquently in her prayer, uh, we, we've been guided by faith and trust to do the right thing for students. We just saw a very comprehensive um, American Rescue Fund presentation. I had to compliment the board uh, for their insistence two years ago, two years ago, in saying you need to start moving those people in that American Rescue Fund into the general fund budget, or you're gonna fall off a cliff that's gonna be really hurtful. The cliff is here. Uh, the cliff is here. It's softened because of the board's ability to have leadership that provides for reserve funds. I believe that this is the time to use reserve funds because I'll say what I say at all times at budget times, our kids need every dollar, every program, every person they can to be successful. The good news is we're seeing results. The good news is our buildings are cleaner, safer, more up to date than they've ever been. I, uh, I really would implore you to vote positively on this budget I know it is a tremendous ask, tremendous ask, to take a budget that uses the amount of reserve funds that I'm asking you to use tonight. I think that you've continued at least uh, in the last 10 years in not even entertaining a tax increase, which we can't do, because uh, this is a negative tax cap. And I want to remind voters we need a 60% majority to pass the budget on the 21st or 22nd, when it is. 
but you took a leap of faith and understood that our kids, our community needs everything. So you have been um, accepting of the ability to use reserve funds. I truly hope that those reserve fund uses are mitigated by a return to the foundation aid formula and more foundation aid money uh, and our continued good work by our finance department in allowing us to have exceeding revenues and savings this year, which will mitigate the amount of reserve funds you're using, which is a very high rate. Not having the ability to raise taxes and not having the will or the, uh, the belief that you should is the right decision. So I appreciate that always. Uh, staying strong and steadfast in not eliminating positions or having layoffs in this incredibly tough time is a bit of an anomaly for a school board, but greatly appreciated and should be appreciated by the students, staff, and community that everyone continues to work and everyone continues to work for a purpose of helping students achieve, be safe, learn, and grow. This is our best thinking board members. Thank you for your patience. We will continue to refine and work, but tonight I'm asking you to support the $190 plus million budget that will be put before the voters in May. Thank you very much. Colleagues, anyone else? I do have a couple of comments, Nick. Yeah, I, go ahead, Nick. I have a comment. Too. Uh, you know, we see on the news every night that the school districts are laying off uh, teachers across the, the area. And this board and the superintendent and staff has made a deep commitment to keep as many people, teachers, cleaners, uh, cafeteria people working so that we can give us, our children the best education that we can possibly give them. And I think it is a credit to the superintendent and the staff, Becky and Julie, that we've come out with this budget and nobody's hitting the streets. So our kids will have the benefit of good teachers and good staff to make their educational experience worthwhile. So I want to commend everyone involved in this uh, process. Thank you. Just a couple comments by myself. First of all, financial staff, Mark, I want to thank every one of you. I, I've been here 24 years. My first year on this board, we couldn't buy a toaster. We, had, we didn't have any reserves. We had many credit cards. We owed funds that we couldn't close out because we didn't have the money. We worked through it, and now we're, we were able to put reserve money away, which is exactly what it's for a rainy day. I also commend staff to do the one thing that really made this possible. They match the one-shot revenues with a, as many one-shot expenses as they could. That's why these other districts are in a pinch, because they matched ongoing expenses with one-shot revenues, and the one-shot revenues ended, and now they have a problem. Uh, I commend staff on that. I know it was hard. It's easy to just let it go, deal with next week, deal with next year, and you did not do that. And I appreciate it, and I commend each and every one of you. And I, I am the one that's very hard to commit reserves. I, I, you know, it took 24 years that I've been here to, to save them, but I think this is the rainy day and it's really, really tough. I think the state has got to get their act together and spend the money where they should, and I'm not gonna get into that. That's a whole conversation for a week and a half. But I wanna give staff credit. I wanna thank the government for the American rescue money. I mean. It, we couldn't have done it without it. I think the bottom line is COVID effects are gonna be here for years. It was, it was not enough and it was too short. We're gonna be feeling these effects and the longer we talk, every year we talk about it, it's, it's going on and on and on. But you make good use of your money, you should be proud, we should be proud. And that's all I have to say, I, job well done under the toughest circumstances. Saying that, we have a motion and a second. Will you call the roll on the budget, please? Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Capizzi? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Cadella? Judy, show him as a yes. Verify it.
I will do so. If Mr. it's any different, let us know. Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Mr. Petrosi? Yes. We get, how many is that, nine? That's eight. eight. That's eight, sir. Eight yeas. Okay, thank you very much, Judy. 2.02 .02 is the approval of the tax report card. That's going to go out to the public. Nick, on the, the motion? Second. Second on Mr. Bass. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass. Yes. Mr. Bilson. Yes. Mr. Capizzi. Yes. Mrs. Dunn. Mr. Pareto. Yes. Mr. Villardo. Yes. Mr. Petrosi. Yes. So adapted. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mr. Lorry. Yes. First of all, Judy, I have a text message from Mr. Cadella. Uh, this is the documentation of his vote. Yes. You're welcome. I do have some, I do have some reports and updates before we close the meeting. First of all, there was a speaker on the 22nd who asked me about community schools. I didn't have the answer that evening, but I do want to report that the average attendance at our community schools is between 10 and 13. It's low. Uh, Christ Redemption, which is on um, Niagara Street, uh, has the most daily attendance between six and eight kids. Uh, that's Bishop Dobbs' church. Uh, we will have two graduates as a result of community schools. So um, I really think it's well worth it. I'd like to address another comment that was made um, in another situation that happened before the break, not to, not to bring back uh, you know, difficult memories, but I would like to commend uh, the uh, staff and the administration at Niagara Falls High School. Uh, they have had an excellent week back, an excellent week back. They have buckled down, uh, they have tightened up, they have had three great days of school. I'm anticipating more. I've asked them to have the stamina to keep this going. Um, uh, I'm, I'm proud of the way we've returned. We've returned best. We've had a good reset this week at Niagara Falls High School. A couple of things that have happened. We did, they did, uh, Ms. Villardo asked for, and we did uh, provide her with an additional safety officer. Um, you, you saw that on the 25th, we're asking you to approve some de-escalation training that was asked for, three sessions for the teachers. Um, the administrative team and the deans have been in roll calls, specifically ninth grade ones, uh, looking at phones, dress, and having a presence. They've spent their three days and will continue to do that. They have instituted what we call hallway sweeps for students that are lingering beyond the bell and taking them uh, and having a conversation with them about expectations, they're going to continue that. I know that uh, some students um, may be getting a bit of a wake-up call, but it's what we ask them to do and it's what the high school is carrying out and it's what's led to a very good return and what I would call a reset. And I'm pleased with the start of the reset that will reset itself through the end of this year. I've also given them two charges, uh, two charges before the year's out, um, before the year's out, well, three charges, really. I think we've got to get back to making that big school feel small. And um, we've talked about a couple of ideas they're going to present to, to me on May 6th, ways that they can do that to make the, small, the school feel smaller. I'll report to you back when we have ideas. Spent extensive time talking to them about cell phones and the fact that our kids K to eight are coming up with that expectation and we're losing it a bit, to be very honest, in the high school. And uh, they are working on a very a strong plan for the beginning of next year. And um, we are really going to take a look at our alternative program within the school to make sure that it gets back on a good target. We may have had some stray from that, uh, but uh, I've given them those three charges and I will get a report on May 6th on how they're doing. So I don't want to repeat or go back into some of the, you know, some of the disappointing or unpleasant things that we had to deal with before the break, but I do want to congratulate the entire high school for their reset this week. It's been a good week. It's been a really good week and I expect it to continue. I know it will continue. That does not mean that we won't have a hiccup or a stone in our shoe from time to time. 
that is going to happen. We're dealing with young people, and young people need guidance and sometimes have hiccups and have stones in their shoes, uh, and, they, and they need to be guided. So there's nothing that will ever guarantee anything to be perfect, but having the reset this week made it feel like the beginning of school again, and I want to thank them. Talking about the money that you've allocated and the American Rescue Funds, I was super proud to read the Buffalo News on Saturday morning. And the Buffalo News ran a story of all of the graduation rates in Western New York. And it was very, very nice to see Niagara Falls graduation rate at 85%. Now, we, I had been predicting 86%. We came in at 85%. Those diplomas were all earned. Students, if you received a diploma and you're part of that, you earned the diploma. 85% is very good. I made a comment in the newspaper. I'm not going to be, I would, I would hope it would be 100%, but I'm a bit of a realist, and I won't be satisfied till that number's in the nines. It begins with a nine and gets higher. Then, then we need to keep it there. So there's work to do. When you drill down into that graduation rate, I think something that's telling, uh, because we speak quite openly about this, is that our graduation rate for black and brown students was 85%, and our graduation rate for white students was 84%. So that a gap or disparity is not there. It's equal. So we put a lot of effort in making sure that we teach and treat uh, And finally, Madison Simpson, our high school student. Madison uh, was the young lady who introduced our astronaut on Saturday. Uh, Madison is a hugely impressive young lady who attended High Park School and uh, LaSalle and is now at Niagara Falls High School. She is choosing between two colleges, Howard University and Morgan State. She's gonna study math, science, and physics because she too would like to be an astronaut. And we're very proud of Madison as our Martin Luther King uh, or now. Madison happens to not be able to be there and she's very regretful, but she is going with her, with her group of kids. Another trip we're sending kids on next week, we're sending kids to Puerto Rico. The advanced Spanish students are going to Puerto Rico next week and Madison is an advanced Spanish speaker. Uh, her mom, Bertha, uh, will be there accepting for her. Be, be, is it Beatrice? I knew it was B. Sorry, Miss. Sorry, ma'am. It's Beatrice. I know her, and I know her. I know the cousins um, and the family. Bertha, the, Bertha Martin is her cousin. Bertha was my student. That's why I got Bertha in my head. But the family is beautiful, and Madison is beautiful. Um, so please come to that event. It will be 90 minutes. It will be at Bond. It will be lively, uplifting, and fun. I wanted to thank uh, one of our secretaries, Kelfis Magnet School secretary, Ardell Dolson. Ardell Dolson and her sister, who is a retired Rochester principal, Ardell is the secretary at Kelfis, bought out of their own uh, out of their own pockets gifts for 50 Kelfis students who had perfect attendance. I'm talking about beautiful gifts. She did that because uh, as a secretary, she sees the kids. She's so impressed with these 50 students at Calvis who have perfect attendance. She took it upon herself with her sister to pay for very nice gifts for these kids. So wow, thank you. Congratulations to the Niagara Falls High School Marching Band. They went to the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Buffalo on St. Patrick's Day, obviously, and performed, and they finished in first place in the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Buffalo. Congratulations to directors Custody, Schmey, and Stockings, uh, great musicians we have as well. I wanted to congratulate um, one of our teachers, um, Annalise, Annalise Shear, Murray, is it first name? Annalise Shear, she's a business marketing teacher. Um, Ezra Scott Sr. has been working with the Tops on Portage Road to uh, update that Tops. And uh, Annalise and her marketing students put together the frozen food display to upgrade the 
uh, upgrade the tops. And they're so good that they're going to use our students to be the marketers for the frozen food section at Tops. So I want to thank um, manager Heather Robbins Crowley, who was a student at Niagara Falls High School, uh, and she's the manager of the store. I want to thank Ezra Scott Sr. for his advocacy in improving that Tops. And I want to thank Annalise and the marketing students of Niagara Falls who are uh, doing the marketing around frozen foods. And the kids were honored and given a nice breakfast this morning and they took pictures and while they were there they found a wall that um, was displayed and they also were also hoping to paint a mural with our students in that Tops to make it look better. Tops has also agreed to become one of our partners for more job shadows. So it's Niagara Falls High School kids doing well. Lastly, I'd like the board members to have this. This is a complete sports schedule, day-by-day -day sports schedule for our spring sports uh, so that you can have our spring sports schedules, know when the games are. These are all of our sports uh, by day. You can get out to them. Uh, I'm also going to take an ad out in the uh, paper beginning in May so that the schedules are published every day, every week. But I want you board. I want the board members to have the sports schedules for spring sports. It's a complete packet. Finally, finally, uh, I just wanted to again say thank you to the board members for your understanding and your work on the budget and your support of the resolutions this evening. Um, you do it better than anyone when it comes to making good decisions for kids. So, thank you very much. Um, our next meeting is on the twenty fifth. That's a Thursday evening, and we have a couple of good presentations that evening. Um, and um, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Can I add one thing to the about the sports schedule? Sure. I'm biased because my son's playing, but I noticed that I don't think it's officially a sport for us, but the boys, the boys modified hockey team that we share with uh, Lockport, they yep. play Saturdays and Sundays at the Harbor Center. It's been a really great experience okay. as, a, as a pair, as a parent to watch the teams play on the ice. Great complex they have there at the Harbor Center. But um, they have games on Saturday and Sunday this week. Uh, team's doing great. I think we're 1-0-1. Oh, Good. Uh, had a great showing, but we can add it to that. I, Mr. Bilson, I'll have that for you. You don't have to do anything. I'm just saying. No, I will add Shout it. out to the modified hockey team. I'll add it. Great. Stan's a hockey guy. He knows. Yeah, do you know Stan's record as a hockey coach? I, I hope I hope I it can was tell a winning you. record. No, I can tell you what it was. Well, can I be wow. you for a second? Yeah. Because okay. I envy you. That this is where you would throw a jab at Tony and say, his record's better than Tony. Well, football. barely. <laughs> I was going to say barely. He has, no, he's got 18 good wins and 104 losses. Oh. But it's it's not bad. It's not bad. He won a sectional game. He, well, he won one sectional game against Orchard Park, um, which was known all over the state, by the way. But 18 and 104 is seven wins ahead of Tony Pareto. So it's, <laughs> sorry, John. <laughs> Want to add, add anything else, Rob? Anything else? I'll go around the horn real quick, Earl. Um, once again, thank you for your support with the HBCU tour. Uh, we, we did go um, to Clark Atlantis, Morehouse, Spellman, and Morris Brown. Um, and I want to say this publicly because uh, there's been some things said, but in order for the students to go on that trip, they are required to participate in a program. They have to be cleared by their teachers. They also have to write an essay. And along with that essay process, we actually check to make sure that they wrote it and not use like chat, chat GBT or something like that because there were some, some students who, who used AI to write their essays and they were excluded. Um, they, they, they can verify. So um, I just wanna say that and it, it went really well. Um, we flew down to Atlanta, some of our students, that was their first time ever flying. So we appreciate the district giving them that opportunity. Um, to
to have 17 girls and two boys and 17 <laughs> no it, it really they they really handled themselves well they conducted themselves well um and i was very proud of how they how they handled it we explained the you know the fact that they're pioneers with this because this is only the third time that we've done this and how what they do in this paves the way for people and you know students coming up behind um and i just wanted to say thank you uh, thank you for allowing me to participate with that program um, and, and attend those places with those students. Um, we visited Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s childhood home. Um, we went to his gravesite. We also, while, while the boys were at Morehouse, the girls were um, visiting another museum. We saw the Spellmans, their quilt. They have a, a quilt uh, display in their art museum. Um, it, was a, it was very productive trip and once again our students were advocating for themselves one of our students had applied to a certain university and she was denied entry but she spoke to a admissions counselor she had already submitted her appeal and hopefully um, that'll work and, and then even even in that you know she she was reflective and said you know early on in my academic career I made some mistakes and I corrected those and later on um, so that might have caused me to you know not be able to get this opportunity now but here are pathways that I can take so that my ultimate goal to attend this university I can get there and uh, it takes a lot of maturity and responsibility to be to to do that um, and I was very proud of how our students conducted themselves also um, thank you for allowing me to go to New Orleans got some information really great speakers Ruby Bridges was there um, Mr. Montanez the creator of the Cheeto and his story is incredible um, I think that's something like even just watching a movie I think that's something our kids could do because the man went from being a janitor to creating the Cheeto that's literally how the flaming hot Cheeto that's how he did it as a janitor um, so Thank you again, um, and I just wanted to say that. Oh, and thank you to our staff for really buckling down with this budget because it's, it's very frustrating. Um, and to hear districts talking about 35 and 65 cuts and we not have any, I appreciate it, and I'm proud to be on this board. Thanks, sir, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Clara. This isn't really, I guess, pertaining to the school, but what you said about our students doing the frozen food at Tops. Um, I also read that there's going to be a substation at the Tops. So that puts the confidence um, back in me uh, to shop at Tops. And the city of Niagara Falls, our residents need to know these good things. And also with you explaining the F code budget. Yeah because I have heard some very nasty, negative things about what we do with that mo uh, money. So now I can go back and explain to them that everything they're saying is false. So I appreciate that, and thank you. Well, thank you. I think it was really important, Richard, put that together. I, I know there's some misconceptions out there about that, but it's all accounted for. It's all audited. It's all budgeted for particular purposes. And that PowerPoint is real, we'll update that as Mr. Bilson suggested and show it to you. It won't take as long in the future, but I think it's a good document to accompany the general fund budget. You may. Yes. Thank you. Rob, anything else? Just thanks for the effort put into the budget. Uh, well done, especially with, uh, you know, um, Mark having to communicate back and forth. So happy to have you both back. But well done, and kudos to Mr. Bass, who always, always is is involved. You're a great board member and a, and a great community member, so kudos to you, Mr. Bass. That's it. Tony? I'd like to thank our staff for putting a very difficult budget together. Uh, thank the rest of my board members for being financially uh, have the wherewithal to foresee um, the shortcomings 
thanks to Russ, he, he called some of it, you know, way back when, not, not too many years ago, and, and some of you have too. And uh, that's, uh, that, that, that keeps us from laying off any staff, and I'm as proud of that as well as some of, of my colleagues have, uh, have reported. Um, Mr. Bass, you um, also, I'm going to piggyback on what Mr. Bilson said. Um, you are an excellent board member, and the work you do with these young people is amazing. The time you give, it should be uh, commended. And, uh, you know, I went away with you last year. Sorry I didn't get a chance to do it this year. But I know how hard you work at this. And uh, I appreciate and I'm, I'm proud to work with you on this board. And so some of my other board members. The time we put in here, of course, for that, you know, we, we do it because we love this district. We love these children. And, uh, again, proud to serve on this board with you. So, uh, hopefully the state will give us some more money, find out their way to fund us better as public school kids, because it doesn't look good at all. I'll leave my comments to a you know, bare minimum, but again, uh, glad to be back and uh, from break and uh, continue on the good work. Thanks, Tony. Nick? Well, I, I pretty much said everything I had to about the budget earlier, but uh, I, I also went to New Orleans on this uh, board convention, and uh, one thing that never ceases to amaze me that uh, I hear what other school districts are going through, uh, attitudes on the board and uh, dysfunction and uh, animosity with the superintendent and another board. It, it's disgusting. And I, I don't... I don't think everybody realizes, and I tell them the relationship we have on our board, I don't think people realize what a, what a good working relationship we have between each other and with the superintendent and staff. It's amazing because I would say 90% of the, the districts out there, nationwide, it's not the state, it's a national school board, but it, it's pathetic, it really is. So I just want to pat, wish, pat every, all of us ourselves on the back for doing a good job and getting along and doing the right thing for kids, and that's what turns, that's what makes a good board. And thank you. Good words, Nick, it's very true. Earl, thank you, staff, thank you. A job well done in tough times. Could have been a lot worse. We'll make it this year, we'll make it next year, and we'll make it for 10 years after that. We'll fight the battle. Uh, saying that, anybody else? Last group, anyone back there? Becky, Judy, Julie, and no, no one? Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome back to our young ladies over there. Welcome, welcome back. back. Welcome back. Congratulations on your newborn. That's the, yes, sir. One last thing. Congratulations to BOCES. They actually received um, the, the Magna Award yeah. uh, down there. It was, it was a pleasant surprise to see our local BOCES receive that award. Um, I'll keep that shady comment to myself, but well, you know, I, it's certainly the work that they've done with the the incarcerated people. So I, I believe, if I've read correctly, uh, a well deserved a well deserved award for Boses, our Orleans Niagara Boses, who has gone in, who has made their way into the jail to provide programming to those that are incarcerated to help them turn their lives around, which is very admirable and very deserving of, a, of an award. So I do think they, I do think that was recognition well-deserved. I think the bottom line is thank you to everyone. Saying that, motion for adjournment, thank you, Rob, Nick, on a second, all in favor.